What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how Tribe Gaming just won $65,000 in the Town Hall 13 Cup. We won it all guys. Nine rounds. I believe 362 teams at the beginning. We won all nine rounds in a row to win $65,000. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the triples. All right, guys, so here it is. This was the last war in the Town Hall 13 Cup. This was the Grand Finals, Tribe Gaming versus Team Vatang. We were able to get the victory 12 to 12. Look at how close this was on percent, 90.8 to 89.4. I mean, just 1.4% difference, as close as you can get in this war. Uh, on defense, well, let's show the war events. Right at the end of war, guys, I mean, Look at this. I got the 99% defense and I got the triple right at the end of the war that gave us the victory. Also, huge props to Eve Check, right? Also, when there was only one minute left in war, he was able to get the triple, which also helped us get the victory there. Uh, so, in this last war, him and I were the two to get the triples. We're going to go ahead and take a look at both of those attacks. And then we're probably going to take a look at another uh, war afterward. Uh, so, my base here, it never got tripled. Uh, in this ESL Cup, uh, a couple of really good defenses, and then right at the, at the in the grand finals, 99%. They just barely didn't get it. So I'm going to be sharing that base with you guys probably tomorrow. So if you want to see that, definitely let me know, and I'll be able to post it. Uh, if not tomorrow, maybe the day after. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, we built a ton of bases for this event, guys. I mean, the base building, the testing has been crazy. We made at least 30 bases. For this event we didn't use all of them because you know we only wanted to use the best bases so we built 30 we probably used like 15 or so for the whole tournament just to show you guys the war log really quickly though before we jump into some of the replays from that last war here it is right here these are all the teams that we beat zombie doom was the first one that we played this was the round of 512 right here then the round of 256 and so on 128 64 32 16, 8, 4, and then the final two teams here, Tribe Gaming and Vatang, we were able to get the victory. So a few of the wars were pretty close. Uh, we actually won uh, quite a few of them on percent. I think three or four of them were on percent. Uh, the rest were victories on stars. But let's go ahead and jump straight into the first replay here. My attack on this base. Vatang kind of a little trolly here in the last war. They ran like two or three anti-two-star bases, which kind of threw us off. Uh, it, you know, they got us on some of the other uh, attacks. I think it Itsu failed, although his attack was pretty close. Um, but they kind of got us. I mean, we're not super used to hitting these anti-twos, but it's a little risky running anti-twos. But I was able to get this one right at the end of war, figured out how to beat it. Uh, just came up with this plan where I'm going to warden walk over here at 6 o'clock. Just drop my warden. He's going to get a bunch of stuff. And then basically with these anti-two-star bases, all you got to do is find a way to cut off the funnel on both sides. Just like I told you guys before in one of my Legends League's attacks videos. All you got to do is cut off the funnel on both sides and then get everything to push into the core. And from there it should be GG unless you time fail or something. So I'm going to start off with the warden walk. And then I want to cut off the funnel right here and get all these defenses. So how am I going to do that? Just like I've been showing you guys in all my other videos lately. Blimp. Yeti bomb. Blimp with Yetis inside of it. So that's going to take it out. As soon as the Warden gets this AD, I'm safe to drop the Blimp. There's not much that can harm the Blimp. So I drop a few loons here to try and test for Seeking Air Mines, and then I drop the Blimp, and the balloons don't even get the Seeking Air Mine. Look at this. The Blimp still pulls one right there. Now it's going to go and chase the Blimp and get it down. But the Blimp's still going to make it as far as I needed it to. I just really wanted to get that Scatter Shot, and anything else was extra. Well, I wanted the Scatter Shot in both the Expos. But it's going to end up getting the bomb tower and it's going to get like two Teslas over here, which is really good value. Now, I got a little scared when my warden started following the Yeti. I got really nervous. I thought I was going to lose my warden. So I dropped my queen over here and warden comes back. I get a partial CC pull, a few of the archers there. I drop my king to walk this way and I'm going to drop the royal champ over here on this side. And her job is to get all these defenses right here and cut off the, the other side of the funnel, just like I keep telling you guys to do. So she's going to cut off the other side of the funnel here with her ability. I'm going to freeze this single target Inferno so it doesn't kill any of my P.E.K.K.A.s or Yetis. Everything's pushing through. I still haven't used a Rage on the main group of troops. I pop 
my Royal Champ ability. So she gets those defenses and cuts off the funnel. So now everything's going to push into that Town Hall. Dropping the poison over the Lava Hound uh, for when they pop it here. The Yeti Mites and the Pekka's Enraged basically one-shot that Town Hall. So I popped the Warden ability here. Crazy good value. My Royal Champ stayed alive after making the funnel. And she came over here and joined in with the rest of the group. So she's going to help the Queen take out those Lava Pups super quick. So really good value from her. She's going to stay alive and take out all the defenses around the edge of the base. Which really helped uh, this to not be a time fill. Because it might have been a time fill if that Royal Champ had not stayed alive. Uh, the BK is going to stay alive. He's going to come out here and help the Royal Champ with cleanup over there. My Pekkas and Yetis and Queen are still alive with the Warden. Warden just now died. They're pushing through all the defenses on the back end here. Queen is still full health with her ability. She's doing a really awesome job here. Uh, I dropped some loons over here to try and get that Archer Tower. God, that was a bad arrow. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I had a wizard that I saved. He's going to do some cleanup over here. And from here, I mean, it's, it's a triple. This was the last attack of the tournament. This is the one that ended up securing the victory in the end. Uh, I mean, of course, it's not the only attack. We needed uh, Eve Check's attack there to also get the 12 stars. But this was the last one. So it was kind of the one that everybody was watching at the last second. And they knew when they saw this attack, Tribe Gaming got the victory. We got the $65,000. So an awesome attack there. And I don't normally do uh, Yeti Smash, but I just knew that was the right attack for this base. Uh, everybody else had some pretty nice plans for some of these other bases. They were a little tricky. I mean, I got you got to give it to Vitang. They had some, you know, really, they had some nice bases. They were more tricky, some of them kind of trolly. But, I mean, that's kind of what you have to do in this one-hit format is you have to be a little trolly. If you just put up, you know, a normal... Uh, good looking anti three star base somebody like itsu or, or hex are going to be able to pick it apart and figure out exactly how to triple it in just a few minutes because they're just so good at doing that so the the kind of trolley bases are kind of what works better actually against teams like tribe so you know props to Vitang for you know kind of going you know all out it was a little risky what they did but you know it, it almost paid off for them keeping us only the 12 stars is pretty impressive so we're going to go ahead and take a look at this attack by Eve Check here. Uh, he's, again, going to be doing another Yeti Smash. That was what was working on their bases. Because, you know, it seemed like they were building against uh, the Queen Charge Miners or the Queen Charge Hybrid because they probably know that that's what we like to do the most. So I think they were building against it on purpose because we just couldn't see any good plans on their bases with the Queen Charge Miners and the Queen Charge Hybrid. So he's just going to be sending everything in straight into this Town Hall. He was able to wall break in front of the Town Hall and then quad quake through on the back side of the town hall so everything is just going to push into the core of this base he uses bk and the siege barracks on the other side to make sure that funnel is super nice and clean and all his troops are going to go straight into the core you know he did the quad quake on the entry then he's going to have a jump spell going into the back end he still has the road champ which he's going to be sending from this right side over here she's going to get a bunch of defenses on the side and to make sure that these yetis are going to pass straight through the end of the base and they're not going to wander off to the side or anything like that uh, so that eagle is all the way on the back end, but it's not going to be a problem at all. All his troops are going to path over there sooner or later, and they're going to be able to take it down really nice and easily. Just to make sure he's going to get this three-star here. There is a single target in front on the back end with a big Tesla farm. So a little bit trolly there, trying to bait some sort of queen walk over here, I imagine, or a Sui. But we're not going to fall for it. We did enter on the good side of the base, and he was able to get everything down here nice and easily. Queen's still alive. She's pushing through, getting that mortar. He did have a, a loon that he saved on the back end. Still has another loon too, but he really doesn't need it. He's going to end up dropping it over here on the Archer Tower. And from here, I mean, it's really just clean up. Really nice executed attack here by Eve Check. Also helping us secure the victory against Team Vitang here in that final war. That one's going to be the triple. Those were the only two triples we got in this war. But we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the replays from the semifinals match also that we had. Because that was a really nice war too. So that one is going to do it. Two Yeti smashes in this war that got us the triples. With the victory for the tournament. So nice job there. Let's go ahead and take a look at that semifinals match that we had right before it. 13 to 11 against Muzan. Now this one I believe had some popular players from Nova in it. This team. Uh, I believe Wei and somebody else. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the attacks here. We'll take a look at Itsu's attack on number 5. He came in with the Queen Charge Dragons. I remember we had two really good Queen Charge Dragons plans during this war. Itsu did one of them and I did the other. And I ended up time failing 95%. Just barely didn't get it. But that's going to be okay. We still were able to get the victory on this one. Because even with me uh, time failing, we were still able to get three triples. So really nice job by Tribe here in this war. So we're going to take a look at this one. Now you think, what does he want to do here? 
uh, Queen Charge Dragons, you think, oh, okay, he's trying to charge in for the Town Hall, right? No, actually he's not. He's going to walk all the way around the Town Hall, send his BK all the way down this channel here, and he's going to wall break right here to get his Queen into the Inferno Compartment, and she'll be able to get the Eagle and cut out all this pathing here. She'll be able to kill the CC as well, and then he'll be able to send his Dragons in straight through the Town Hall and into the core, where they'll be able to take out everything else, and the pathing is just really nice for them. So let's watch here how he does the wall break. Now he sends the first wall breaker and a rage and he's going to go ahead and freeze and then send the rest of the wall breakers. The first wall breaker was just a test. Now the rest of the wall breakers go in before that freeze wears off. Queen's going to step right in for this inferno tower. He doesn't even need to uh, invest a lot of troop space over here to funnel thanks to all these gaps over here. The queen just naturally kind of walks in. So that's nice. This loon over here on the side is going to pull a seeking air mine, which is just super good value. He's going to rage up his queen again just to make sure she's going to stay alive. He's going to get the slammer over here to take out all these defenses and then the pathing for the dragons straight into the town hall and then straight into the core. They have nowhere else to go. Just beautiful pathing here that he's set up with this nice little queen walk into a queen charge. So Itsu, uh, the CC finally coming out, going over to his queen. He's going to be able to take them out, no problem really easily with a poison spell there just a few ice golems and a witch and whatnot or i think it was actually two ice golems and a bunch of archers now he is sending his royal champ on this backside to get that ad down you don't want it to be messing with your dragons and he still has a bunch of dragons left alive no more ad's on this base queen's still alive warden's still alive royal champ already used her ability she's still alive getting this skelly trap saves a baby dragon for the back end just in case he doesn't know where he's going to need it so he brought that extra he also has one more in the bag that he can use wherever needed wherever if the dragon skips some buildings or whatnot now these dragons are starting to get super low on hp but he's going to drop this baby dragon on the back end to tank and a few loons and they're going to get these teslas that tesla farm on the back end queen's going to go back outside the base and go finish off the rest of the trash ring and you already know it's going to be a triple here when we saw this Bunch, bunch of dragons still alive. Warden at full health. Queen at full health. Swags the queen ability, honestly. Beautiful attack there by Itsu on this one. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the others. There was Nick with a 90%. Me with a 95%. So, I mean, we were pretty close to the perfect war here. Just 15% off. We'll go ahead and take a look at Eve check and Hex's attack also before we call it a day. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, Eve check's going to be coming in with the queen charge hybrid here. Going to be starting off with a P.E.K.K.A. Funnel over at 7.30 and then the Queen right over here next to him at 7. She's going to be walking down south. No wall breakers on this one and he does currently have a Siege Barracks activated so we'll see how he uses that. Queen's going to be stepping in over here to the right. Coming in, there's a Skelly Trap that triggered. She's going to have to take that out first then she's going to walk all the way over here. The walk's going to take quite a bit of time so we're going to go ahead and fast forward through just a little bit of it he still hasn't pulled the cc he has to pull the cc eventually now the goal here was to funnel the queen over here using the bk and get queen to go inside this channel where she can take out the eagle and the inferno tower and the scatter shot and all these splash damage buildings because she'll be able to reach all of it just a really nice plan here i mean i don't know if they were trying to bait this charge with the open section because i mean it wasn't that hard to funnel the queen in there so i'm not sure what their plan was here when they were building this base but it didn't work out for them I mean, there's not even any seeking air mines taking out healers here. There probably should have been a bunch. She's going to get crazy good value here. And now he's going to be using the siege barracks over at 9 to funnel all this trash out here. And he's just going to send in his miners straight into the town hall. I mean, you got to make sure you get that 2-star. But the miners are going to have a really nice pathing here. They're going to push all the way through the core. He's going to be able to use his royal champ to get all these inside defenses so that the miners have this nice, beautiful channel just to push through like that. There's nowhere else for them to go. So he sends in the miners, sends in the warden, sends in the hogs. His queen pops the lava hound. She's going to kill all the pups pretty easily. Still has another rage that he can use on her. And he has a free spell. Out come some hogs from his siege barracks, those max hogs. He's going to be dropping the first heal right over here to get all the hogs and the miners in the heal. Just beautiful execution here from Eve check. His queen still alive with her ability. She got all this stuff on the outside of the Inferno Island, getting all the rest of the trash. She's going to keep walking around the edge of the base. These miners and hogs only have to push through this Inferno. As long as they get that Inferno down, it's GG. The queen can clear the rest of the base. I mean, this one here was just overkill. He has a ton of miners up, ton of hogs up. Just, again, a nice, really good attack here from Eve Check. He was able to get the triple in both the semifinals and the finals, so really nice job by him at the end of the tournament. He got some triples, too, before that. I'm not saying he didn't, but I'm just talking about the last two wars right now. And then Hex coming in also 
in the semifinals war, getting the triple with the Yeti Smash here with a Yeti Bomb. So now we're seeing new variations of the Yeti Smash. I mean, kind of like the first uh, replay I showed you today where I did do a Yeti Bomb and then into a Yeti Smash. But this one, the Yeti Bomb is going to be for the Town Hall, unlike my attack. So let's take a look here at how Hex executes it. He's going to be starting off with a Warden Walk up here at 12 just to funnel all this crap over here. Uh, it's a nice, easy, free funnel. He's going to also end up doing a Yeti Bomb for the Town Hall from this direction to uh, set up the funnel. And he's going to drop his BK to walk this way and clear all this stuff. These buildings are going to go down from the funnel. So then the Yeti Smash has nowhere to go but straight through this channel right here where they're going to be able to get everything and then split kind of over here in the core and just demolish the base from the inside. I mean, the healers are going to keep the Yetis up forever. So let's go ahead and take a look here how he does the Yeti Bomb. Always sending in loons in front of the bit blimp. you got to do that every time you're doing the Yeti Bomb because you don't know where the Sams are or how many they're going to be. His um, blimp does end up catching a Sam there and kind of goes down a little bit early, a few tiles in front of the Town Hall, but it's still going to work out here. Those Yetis are going to get the Town Hall and they got the CC pool. Now he's going to be dropping the Quakes here, so the whole base is completely opened up. His king's going to go around this way. The CC's coming out to his main force. He already dropped the queen and all the yetis, saving that royal champ for the back end. Now he's actually going to use her over here on the left side to get these defenses to make sure that the, the funneling for his main group, for his main push, is just spot on. There's nowhere for them to go but straight through the core of the base like this. They have to stay in there because that's just where the only buildings they can see are, honestly. He saves a back end Pekka. Look at this. At first, I remember seeing this, and he was like, no, I did this on purpose. He saves a back-end P.E.K.K.A. to get these defenses and these trash buildings on the edge of the base because he wanted to make sure everything just stayed inside this channel. Um, I think he should have used a wizard with that P.E.K.K.A. a little bit earlier. He ends up dropping him here in a little bit. He just wanted to make sure he saved those wizards for cleanup wherever needed so he doesn't time fail because I think this one actually was really close on time. I think he tripled it with just like two or three seconds to spare. But, I mean, overall, just a beautiful plan by Hex. Every, all the Yetis ended up dying out over here. They went into this compartment, and nothing went to this Inferno. So that is going to be the last building that they get down. And that's kind of why it was close on time, because they have to uh, go back and get that Inferno here in a little bit. But other than that, just a really nice executed attack. Perfect plan here from Hex. Everything's going to end up finishing over here, and then the Warden's going to take out this Inferno here in just a few seconds. And that's going to be it for this war. That'll be all three triples. I mean, so there you have it, guys. Hex getting the triple here. Uh, Tribe Gaming coming out with the victory this weekend. I mean, 362 teams. We didn't get a buy first round. A lot of teams got a buy. We did not. So basically, you could have said 512 teams. I mean, it didn't make a difference to us because we had to play the round of 512. So we were able to get nine victories in a row. We'll go ahead and take a look at that war log one more time before we call it a day. Here we go, nine victories in a row, starting there with Zombie Doom. Tribe Gaming able to pull out the victory this weekend. Um, awesome performance by the guys in Tribe Gaming, just stellar, spot on. Everything was working right. I mean, we had a few close calls, not going to lie. Some of these wars got really close, way closer than we wanted them to be. But in the end, it ended up working out for us. Nine for nine, awesome job by Tribe Gaming, winning $65,000. Um, I mean, the Town Hall 13 Cup, just really fun, really exciting, an awesome experience, especially since it's our first kind of big war since the merge, since we made the new roster, you know, uh, some of the guys from WHF, some of the guys from the X Tribe, all combining into the new Tribe Gaming, and it's working out really well for us, guys, so, I mean, let me know what you think down below. Uh, we're starting to move into the Poland qualifiers next month, coming up in early February. We've got the first one coming up. So, I mean, can Tribe qualify for that? We'll hope so. We'll stay tuned, and you'll find out. If you guys like the video, make sure you subscribe for more content, and I'll see you guys in the next one.